Hey, you're on. Ben Hay Ahmed Aleph, 45A. Achanami Mistavra, the Rod from Yudasvirale. Again, we're in this discussion of whether there is muktzah or no muktzah. Of course, Rabbi Yehuda holds Islay muktzah. He, he does hold of muktzah. Rabbi Shimon, in general, does not hold of muktzah. And the Gemara wants to say it's logical that Rabbi holds like Rabbi Yehuda. Why? We have a statement, Amar Rav, Manichiner al You can place a candle on a palm tree on Shabbos. The aim may nichin ner al gabi dekel biyontif. You can't place it on a palm tree on yontif. Now, why not? What's the difference? Yeah, Mishma de Rav, Rav Yudas Firle. If we're going to hold it, Rav holds like Rav Yuda, where Rav Yuda holds of Mok Tzahayin de Shani ben Shabbos liyontif. That's why there's enough to mean it between why you can do it on Shabbos, you can't do it on yontif. Because since a ner is Mok on Shabbos, you're not going to come to touch it. And if you're going to come to touch it, you might touch the palm tree or use the palm tree, which is, which is muktza. Also, because anything that's chubber to the karka, you're not allowed to be mishtamish on Shabbos. So, if you hold of Moksa, it would be usher to touch it both Shabbos and Yon. Eliyam, Krab Shimon, but if you hold it, there's no end of Miksa. Mali Shabbos, Mali Yon. Why would there be a difference if the, the Nair is not Moksa, even on Shabbos? So people will stay away from Yon if they're not going to stay away from it because the Nair is not Moksa. You're allowed to use a Nair on Yon. So that's why. They allow you to do it on Shabbos because you're not going to come to touch the tree because you're going to stay away from the nair because it's moksa. You won't stay away from the tree on Yontif because the nair is not moksa. You're allowed to use a nair on, on Yontif. But if you hold like Reb Shimon where there's no moksa at all, then there should be no difference between Shabbos and Yontif. You should be, you're not going to stay away from the nair. You're going to come to touch the tree. You're not allowed to be mishtamish with the tree that's mochobar to the karka. So based on that statement, it seems that Rav holds of Muksa, like Rav Yudha. Asks the more of a Rav, Rav Yudha, severely. Is it true that Rav holds like Rav Yudha? Vahabwebine de Rav. There was a question asked of Rav himself. So the Persian, the, the, the Chabara, are Persian priests. Their Arvoda Zara was Zoroastrianism, Zoroastrianism. And fire plays a big role in Zoroastrianism. The basic issue in Zoroastrianism is like a duality. We hold, there's no duality, we hold there's unity. That there's one Hashem and Gam Zulatova, Gam Zulatova. We, we make a bracha to Hashem, Baruch Dayan Emes, and Hatova Meitiv. Everything both good and bad flows from Hashem. That's the opposite of Zoroastrianism, which they held there were two Rishuyos. One Rishuyos governed evil, and one Rishuyos governed good. And part of that, part of that uh, philosophy involved fire worship. Now, they asked the question, if you have a Hanukkah Lech burning, could you move it on Shabbos because the, the, there were days that these Persian uh, priests would go around and prevent people from having fire on certain days. And so in order, if you, it was a Hanukkah, you, you might have to move it so that the Persian priests wouldn't see it. So the Amr Luhu and Rav answered, you could move it. Well, that seems to suggest that Rav does not hold to the concept, the general concept of muktza, like Rav Shimon. Remember, Rav Shimon held you couldn't move a nair that was burning. 
that was doilek, or, or he couldn't be mishtamish with the shaman that was doilek. But in general, he doesn't hold the muktzah. So, so how can you tell me Rav holds a Rav Yehuda? Here it seems like he holds a Rav Shimon. Or it says, no, no right from here. Shasat Chag Shaini. Here they're allowing you to move them in order because of Sakana. It doesn't do with Mutza. It's a Sakana of so you're allowed to move it. So I'm going to Rav Khan Rav Ashton the Rav. They asked when Rav said you're allowed to move the menorah because of the Persians. They, they, his Rav Kahana, Rav Ashi asked Rav, "Is this not lacha?" Yeah, in Shasat Chak, in emergency situations, Sakana, you can rely on Rav Shimon that there's no muktza, but otherwise, Shalom b'Shasat Chak, it's also. Okay, boy, my reish lokish ma biyechno. Chitim shazaron bekarka. You put wheat seeds into the ground, but they haven't taken root yet. So the shaila is or ubeitzim shatachas tarnagolas. A a mother hen is sitting on an egg. Well, you put it. Uh, you you put it there, right? So do we say kiles later of shemin mukta? <clears throat> when does Rabbi Shimon say there's no din muktzah? You didn't push something away. You didn't reject something before Shabbos and like hide something. We've, so maybe only then, if you hide something, if you push something away, Rabbi Shimon says it was not, you know, there's no Indian of muk, of muktzah. But maybe maybe if a person voluntarily hit something or was mocked something or was designated something, it would have been Islam Moksa. Therefore, by you putting the seeds in the ground, you basically showed you that this thing is not going to be prepared. It's not Mukha the Gabi Shabbos. O Dilma Loishna. Or maybe even in that case, Rib Shimon says there's no Mukha. And how far does Rav Shimon go to say there's no muktzah? Amr he holds it does. There's no muktzah. Ain muktzah Rav Shimon. El Shemin Shabin Ebrishashu Dole. He only said that the only time Rav Shimon agreed to muktzah was if a candle burning, you couldn't use the shemin. You could move it, but you couldn't use it. Was it was muktzah limitzah so? And hopefully, Surah says, right. There's an issue because you, if you're going to use the Shemen, by depleting the Shemen, you are in some way extinguishing the flame. So you have two issues. It was Hukzala Mitzvah and Hukzala Isser. Those are the requirements. But just the fact that you put some seed in the ground, that, that still... It would not be muktzah according to Rabbi Shimon. You'd still be allowed to use those seeds if you will. So this more seems to have suggested that for Rabbi Shimon to hold muktzah, you need two criteria: as be huktzah lezuro and huktzah lemitzvahsa. Both you need both. It's not enough huktzah lemitzvahsa. Frank the Gemara, the less lay huktzah lemitzvahsa. Does Shimon say indeed that? If you've designated something for purposes of mitzvah use, it doesn't become muktza and without isser involved, without isser. I'll show you that even if something is designated the mitzvah only and no isser, Rabbin will hold it as muktza. What's the proof? Atanya. When if you put schach on the sukkah. The itra becoming with sadinim am suyori, and you decorated the schach with uh, sheets that were that were painted on. The taller boy goes in. You you hung walnuts, a farsikim pears, shkedim, rimonim, almonds, and pomegranates. There are parchleishal anovim and bunches of grapes. The atorshal shibolim and sheaves of grain. Yenos, shmonim, usaltois, wine, oil, 
and this beautiful flower. By the way, in the Belzer Sook in Yerushalayim, which I've had the privilege of being in many times, there are hundreds of wine bottles hanging from the Sook. It's an unusual decoration, but I've seen it in that sukkah. And then when sukkah is over and everybody's going home to their country, the Belzer Rebbe gives one of those bottles of wine to the guests that, have, that are leaving. Those bottles that have hung throughout sukkahs. Because after sukkahs, they're not muks anymore. But during muks, during sukkahs, Australia stop it, man. You cannot benefit from any of those things that are hanging. Here, there's no muktza uh, de iser. There's no iser. It's not like like when a flame is burning on Shabbos and you take shemen from it. You're worried about extinguishing. That's kibui is is an iser, and that and it's also by, when you light the Shabbos candles, you perform the mitzvah. Here, all we have is hooks of mitzvah. Yet, it seems that they remain muktza. However, if you made it tonight, you hung them, but it's, it's not going to be hugdash for this purpose alone as decoration, but you can use it, so I'll call a fee to Now, we have another step to take. We have to prove that this b'risa is Rav Shimon, right? We, we ask the question, does Rav Shimon hold that if something's only so it's not muktza. So we bring this price that says that the stuff hung by the schach is muktza, even though it's only muktza And how do we know we might rub him in he? The time we're here by Yosef Kamid Rabbi Yechnon, Rabbi was learning a price in front of Rabbi Yechnon. It says, Ain Mitlin Eitz Mina Sukkah Biyontov, Ella Mina Samochla. This is you you you. This is not the new. You have a, a hut on Pesach and Shavuos, says Rashi, and the hut like a gazebo, an outdoor gazebo that, that you sit in for the purpose of shade on a hot day. <laughs> so you cannot. You cannot use those wooden items that are that are, that fell, for example, during Yontif, and put them back up because they were already hooked. They were already designated from the mayor of Yontif, and and and, and, and you simply can't destroy a big on Yontif. but if there's wood nearby. It was not a hop. Right? Rashi says in Somoch, Abilas ate him ate Saldoifnuf. There were some wooden things leaning against the walls of that thing. Lekki is from Muktza. The Daikloy Mesmol, he had his mind, he had his mind on that. The Mishlin Mocha to use it. And but Rab Shimon Matya. Rab Shimon permitted because there is no, there is no concept of hooksa. So even in the first case, you could be you could know it till eight We're not talking about a sukkah, talking about a hut. And Vishavin, but they both agree, the Tarakama and Rabshim, the sukkah sachad, the chad, that a a young thick of sukkah of of sukkis, on sukkis, shehi asura. That you would not be if, if they if these wooden things fell. On Sukkis, it was hooks of the mitzvah. Only, and here there's no is. It's not like Easter keyboard. So you see that Rab Shimon holds of Mukta, even if it's just one eye, if, if it's just one of the criteria, hooks of the mitzvah. Of course, if you miss no love, I'll call no. One second. This is Dr. Einstein.
So answers came Shem and Shabaner Amrina. And over there it's Usr, it's both Huxalim Mitzvaso and Huxali Surah. Hoyl the Huxalim Mitzvaso Once it was designated for its mitzvah, it's, there's also an Isser of des destroying the Oya. So in a sense, Rashi says, Velo Mishum Israel the mitzvah, the whole Huxal Mitzvaso de Shabbos, Huxal Chosman Israel de Likoso, Velo Yoiser. That's by a Nair. The Eng Mitzvaso de Shabbos de Likoso, there's only mitzvah of lighting Shabbos candles while burning. We should cover it, but once it's extinguished, there's no mitzvah anymore. So there, it's muktzah the whole time. Of so it's different than a nair. So it's not exactly kein shem and baner. And it mar nami aruchim parav and rav yechle ain muktzah rav shem and ela kein shem and shabaner b'shav shudolim. Again, rav shem will only say there's muktzah like a shem that's burning. Well, muktzah mitzvah so muktzah li suro. And the, and the way the Meiri explains that it should be and the Vav here is to be understood as all, meaning or. Because the Vav Chibur, sometimes it's not a Vav Chibur, sometimes it could be used all. Because the language of the Gemara is not that clear. means or this or that. And that's how the Rishonim learn that you haven't proved to me that you need. <clears throat> it's one or the other coin of Yoichma, but you don't need both. Coin of Yoichma, coin of Shimon, you need both. All right, Rabbi Shmuel. Ain Moktzel Rabbi Shimon. Ella Gregoritz with Simukin Bilvad. That there's another exception when we say Rabbi Shimon Leslie Moktza. Here's another example. Dried figs and dried raisins. That if you voluntarily or Shabbos put these grapes or figs up on the roof to dry them in the sun and in the, since in the initial stages it smells bad and they're not roy to achila. So, in, so and there you were, he was, he, he designated them with his own mind, and they're there, and at that point, they wouldn't, they're not roy to be eaten, even though maybe Shabbos afternoon, they would be roy to be eaten already. Here, Rav Yudam Rishmo says, Rav Shimon also agrees regarding moods. Are there no other things that he says? Person was eating figs, and then the hoister, but they had they were left over. They had on the goggles those men grow grows, and you put them up on the roof to dry them. Or he was eating another hoister, but on the goggles those men simukim. Or he was eating grapes and he had left over he went up to the roof to put him up there. Lo yoikal ad shiyazmi. So he can't eat them on Shabbos until he designates those specific ones for purpose of eating. Same thing with dried pears and whatever chabushim are. Rashi says quince, right? There's a, there's a fruit called a quince, right? Also, so without designation, they're going to be, if you put them up to dry, there are some Mishumuk. Now, the question is who's the author of this price? Mani. Ile Yehuda. So I understand. Rabbi Yehuda says, even when you don't, you don't physically put something away with your hands. Things are mooks all the time. You just didn't designate them for use. But you, you didn't necessarily push something off. Yet, he holds his mooks. You are putting it away. 
to dry in the sun, you're clearly pushing them off the Adai. Of course, Rabbi Yudah is going to hold his Motza. So it only makes sense to learn that this price is who? El Alav Rabbi Shemini. And therefore, it's, there's other things besides growing with Shvitzi Mokim that would be Moksa. Where it says, Lo Olam Rabbi Yudah. The oichel it's trichalei. The chiddush by Rabbi Yudah because he started feeding them. Then, if there was some left over and brought them up, we still say there's more. So I mean, even the koch of ozel. Since he already ate them, lo leboy azmon. You don't need special azmon later on once they're dry. Kamash malon came to hell of God. Once he he stopped eating and went up to the roof to put them up there. Asuchi ask item. He has a chada. It's a new thought process. He's not thinking about them anymore. And that's enough for Rabbi Yudah to create Moksa. Boy, Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi. Rabbi Shimon, the son of Rabbi, asked his father, Rabbi, the following question. Patsile Tzmora. These are, these are uh, unripe pomegranates that would, they would be left in baskets to ripen. But before they ripen, it's they're not really edible. The Rab Shimon Mao. Would he say that this is muktz or not? Because again, you, you didn't put them off be a diet. They're put, you know, day after day into these baskets until they ripen themselves. Can you eat from them before they become ripe? Does he agree here? That they would be muktz like these groigros with simukim. So the Gemara says no. Ain muktz Rav Shimon ala groigros with simukim bilvad. You need two aspects as Rashi. The dachinu be adayim, and they have to be not raw for eating. So when you brought them up to the roof, you were doicha them be adayim. So that's one thing. And then of course they're not edible. So you have two things. But here, where you didn't, you were not doicha this be adayim. It's been gathered in in baskets. They're just sitting there. They're just not ripe to be eaten. That that would not be muksa legabi rabshi. Okay. So the Rebbe, the fact that Rebbe said a muksa rabshim, does that mean Rebbe holds no muksa? But now I'll tell you a Mishnah. In Mashkin Vishoikin as Amidborios. So on Yontif. When you're allowed to shech an animal, so the question is: Is the animal roy? So, the animals that live in the desert, you can't give them a drink and you can't shech them because they're not designated pre to to be used. The domesticated animals, you can you can give them. They used to make them drink right before shechita, so it'd be easier to remove the hide from the animals. That's what Rashi said. The time, and at what? How do you tell whether an animal is a, a midbar animal or a, a, a domesticated? The time the elu midbarims, koshiyotzus ba pesach. They Go out into the field Pesach time. The nichno, the nichnosus reveals they only come back when the rain starts. So they're never, they're never by you. They're, oh, they're uh, con constantly out of the out of the field. By toes, what determines whether an animal is considered a domesticated when it lives in the house? They go outside of the tchum to pasture, but but they come back into the tchum at night. Both of what you just described, even the ones that leave Pesach and come back winter time, are considered bisous. They are out forever. They never come in. So 
Yeah, so Rebbe does describe an example of Muktza. He does agree that there is such a thing as a uh, as a Behema Midbarios. Yes, he, he make he gives it a much harder criteria, but according in those situations, they would be Muktza. So how can you tell me Rebbe doesn't hold the Muktza? He holds a Muktza. So, so the Gemara gives us another answer, number of answers. He bought the same. Uh, these animals that never come back, so they're like shimen by raisins and uh, figs that you put up on the roof. And uh, so Rabbi Shimon would be moivi here. So in a chanami, it's not to say that Rabbi Hu, what Rabbi hold, Rabbi Deer is also holding like Kula Alma. Everybody will hold in that situation. Rabbi Shimon holds. There's mooks in that situation. B boy same, uh, the steer could be done differently, could be explained differently. So, because that which he said to his son, his own Lidvog Reb Shimon Karmele, Valelos Verle. He explained the way Reb Shimon would answer, but he didn't hold of that. But the E boy same, uh, the Livre Rabban and Karmele, he was really going according to Shikha Chachavi. Lidi di Leslie Mooksa Klaal. I don't know who of any mixer. But let it who, according to Yucha Chomim, Oidel and Mias, please admit to me, Echashiotis, but Pesach, but the Chlosses, Bravir, that the ones that leave, Pesach comes back in the winter, they're considered domesticated. No, so they're arguing on a different point. What's considered Midboris, what's considered domestic? The halacha is regarding what Shimon, regarding whether it's Isle Muksa or Lesley Muksa. Means there's Lesley Muksa. Did Rabbi Yechon, who Yom Rabbi Yechon, and Hachi, did he say the halacha is like Rabbi Shimon? The Haboy Minehu Saba Kruya, certain old man from a place called Kruya, Barmila Sruya. Some say it was an old man from Sruya. Asked from Rabbi Yechon, "Kina shultana golas, a nest of chickens, valu talk to live shabbos. Are they most on shabbos? Since they're not made for the for human usage, they're moksa. So he's old like Rabbi Yud. Rabbi Yechon, how can you say Rabbi Yud holds halachas like Rabbi Shem? Amr leik klum asui alu tarna. So." First of all, this area, it's, it's not really a nest, it's like a chicken coop. So it's not just made for Tanagulam. No, he says like this, chicken coops are only made for Tanagulam. And they're not made for human use at all. So no Zoraya, here we're talking about there's an egg which has a, a dead chick in it. Or no, not an egg, it's got a dead chick in it. And therefore, it's not roy to be eaten. You can't even throw it to a dog on Yonif, Nami Lachazi, or to a, to a dog if you have to feed your dog. Because I guess they won't eat it. Now, even though Rashi says Rabbi Shimon holds mis miskavinus mechatinus on nevela of nekol, you can cut up nevela in front of dogs. That if that's if they're sick of a bria low, they're healthy. No, because you didn't have in mind to do it before you before for the for the dogs. Now, a chick that died on shot, it's also you didn't have in mind. The day before. So it's because the chick is in there. That's why you can't move the bull. But that'll only work according to this mandarma that whole Rabbi Shimon agrees 
Reb Shimon, even the one who holds no muktzah, but animals that die on Shabbos are going to be awesome because no one had thought of that they were going to die, so nobody had their mind on it. But El Amar Reb Yosef said to Rav to Amar, "Cholukai Reb Shimon, I feel like Chaim Shemes." That Reb Shimon was so lenient regarding muktzah that even animals die. That there's no muktzah, they mutter. So then, how did, why does this law become muktzah? There was an egg that was that was laid on Shabbos. And we know that an egg that's laid on Shabbos, if we, nobody had in mind that from before, it's muktza. And Lachor even Rabshim would agree to that. Who says that Rabbi Shem would agree? If you hold the concept of designation like Rabbi Yehuda, then you have this problem of Noyle because if something was just born on Shabbos, you never mind from the air of Shabbos. But that's if you hold Mokta. But the Leslie Mokta, Leslie Noyle. Who says that Rabbi Shem holds of Noyle? He doesn't. If you don't hold of Mokta, you don't have Noyle. So the answer is the Ispe Beitzas Efroach. In this chicken coop was an egg. But it was a type of egg that had a that had a it was a fertilized egg. So nobody can eat it. It's not roy la achila for a human being, not for an animal as well. The kelab she said, Kelab like Mishum Klipa. Because remember, there's a there's a, a shell. Talking about an, an, an egg with a shell on it that's got a ifrach in there. Oh, then everybody would hold its mouth. So. In fact, not like we said before that Allah is a Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Yechonah holds that Allah is a Rabbi Yehuda. However, Rabbi Shimon later or Allah is a Rabbi Shimon that there's less limits. On Rabbi Yechonah, I know that Rabbi Brachon and Rabbi Yechonah on Allah is a Rabbi Shimon on Ruvalei Lo Sfira. He may he quoted it in 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 name that Allah is a Rabbi Shimon, but he didn't agree with that. Okay. You who say that Rav Yechon held the halachas of Rav Shimon, how can that be? Don't you hold that Rav Yechon holds like Rav Yehuda or Rav? Because I'll bring you proof. Rav Abba Rav Asi equal to Rav Abba de Min Chayfa. Rav Rav Asi did Rav Abba from Chayfa. Unafal Menarta Glima the Rav Asi the Lord told me and. A big candelabra fell on Ravasi, and he didn't move it, didn't touch it. My time, Lavishum Ravasi Tamid Rav Yechonav. The reason why Ravasi didn't touch it, Ravasi was a Tamid Rav Yechon. Rav Yechon Krav Yudas for Eliyahu Yisleim Moksa. So how can you say in the name of Rav Yosef that Halach Rav Shem? Omer Leim Menard Kamer, you're bringing me a kasha from. A big candelabra, not to shiny. This is different. Om Ravacha Bartanir Ravasi. Heard Reish Lakish Pitsidin. Reish Lakish Paskin in in Tyre, T Y R E, the city in Lebanon. No, I'm sorry, Sidon, Sidon. Seer Vitsidin. Seer is Tyre, Sidon is Sidon, S I D O N, which is also a town in Lebanon. Narani tells Piodo Achas. A candelabra that you can carry with one hand, mutual You can is you can touch. But Bishteya if it's so heavy, you need to carry with two hands also tatla. Rav Yechonah says the only time that you can that we hear that there's a heter to take touch any kind of nair is that is the nair like Reb Shimon, but of a menorah be nitla biyoda achas be nitla b'shtei yoda v'asul tatli. But a candelabra, whether you use one hand, two hands, it's asul tatli. Why is that? Time of my. Rabbi Yehuda says, "Tamer tavay hoil bottom kavela makom." Nisvar. It can't. We're talking about a big candelabra that you would you would put as a piece of furniture. It's very heavy that you're koveya mokum for it. 
So since this menorah has a makam kavua mesuyim, it's considered like it's part of the building. And like by moving it, it's like you're being soys through the building. Like you're, it's like you're knocking down the building. What do you mean? Very kilas chatanim. Kilas chatanim is like a four-poster bed that it's like a it's like it's like a yeah, like a canopy that that a chasim over the marriage bed. They, it was called kilas chasan, and it was heavy. The adam kovelo makom, and therefore you designated a place for it. You're allowed to set it up and take it down even on Shabbos. So if you explained to me before that the menorah would know was a quick kabua, that you have to put a makam in, how come this kilos katsim were allowed to touch? So it must be there's a different reason. And we'll explain the reason tomorrow. So just, uh, just uh, housekeeping. For tomorrow, we will learn the uh, Tzurim Rabban on uh, eight o'clock. We're going to finish Basar B'chala, Mitzvah Shem, and we will then do Dafyomit nine o'clock to follow.